The 2001 season could have been another big success story for Mitsubishi. Tommy Mackinnon was in a title hunt and Mitsubishi themselves had another huge shot for the manufacturer's crown. Unfortunately, the last few rallies have not been kind for the team. The sudden upturn of Peugeot, the consistent point scoring results from Colin McRae and Richard Burns and the introduction of their very first road rally car ruined their whole season. In the end, Mitsubishi finished third in the manufacturer's standings, ahead of Subaru but behind Ford and Peugeot. Mackinnon lost out on the championship against McRae and Burns and only scored one more point in the last four rallies of the new car. With the 2002 season starting eight weeks after the season finale in Wales, it's time to look back into their first full season with their road rally car and see if there were some notable improvements. To start off, Mitsubishi had to field a brand new driver lineup. Tommy Mackinnon left the team to join its rival Subaru for 2002 and 2003. Freddy Loix also left the team after three tough years to join Hyundai instead. Their first driver was the Frenchman François Delecourt, who came from Ford after an average year where he finished on the podium once. Delecourt was a former winner in the WRC, who made his first appearance in 1984. His prime was in the early 90s, when he joined Ford full-time and remained there from 1991 up until 1995. He came close to winning the title in 1993, however, he lost out to Juha Kankunen. He won his last rally in 1994, winning in Monte Carlo, until an injury forced him to sit out for several rallies. In 2002, however, he was far from his best, but his experience could be important for the car's performance. The second driver was Alastair McRae, who came from Hyundai, basically switching his position with Loix. Alistair is the younger brother of Colin McRae and made a mark for himself, showing some strong performances in the Hyundai accident, a car far from being competitive. His best result was the fourth place in the Wales Rally GB in 2001, showing his true potential. A third car was prepared for selected rallies for the young Finn Yanni Parsonen, who had the chance to show what he was made of in his few starts. Rally Art Europe was still managing the whole operation at the time, with Andrew Cohen remaining as a team principal and Bernard Lindauer remaining as their chief engineer. But seeing as they still had to use their unproven road rally car and with their team leader Mackinnon gone, what could go wrong? The season opener for the 2002 season was in Monte Carlo, as usual. A rally where the Mitsubishi have done well in the past, with Mackinnon winning all three rallies from 1999 onwards. But things weren't starting well for Mitsubishi. Delacour would have to fight for a top 8 spot, whilst McRae would struggle throughout the event with the car, being consistently slower than his teammate. At least the car showed some reliability, as Delacour would actually finish the rally inside the top 10, but with the point format being different, only the top 6 would score points, he sadly missed out. McRae did eventually finish in 14th, being over 11 minutes of the winner. To rub salt in a wound, Tommy Mackinnon would actually win his first rally in the Subaru Impreza, showing that it was not entirely Mackinnon's fault for a poor performance last year. The Rally Sweden saw the debut of the Finjani Parsonen, driving the third Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution World Rally car for this event. On this rally, the car would finally show some speed in the hands of new boy Parsonen, who managed to end day one in fourth, having finished all stages within the top 10. Alistair McRae couldn't quite keep up with Yanni, but still managed to finish the day quite solidly, unlike Delitko, who beached his car in the snowbank. Unfortunately for Parsonen, he couldn't keep up his level, as he hit a rock and dropped back to 18th. He was trying to claim back some positions, but he never found his speed from day 1 again and finished 14th. Delacour also tried to make up some lost time. Having only finished one stage inside the top 10, he finished 34th overall. McRae, however, was still doing some solid times, finishing multiple stages inside the top 10, which gave him a shot at driver's points. Things were getting slightly easier for him when his brother Colin also beached his car in the snowbank, dropping him outside of the top 10. On the final day, 
McRae finished 3 out of 4 stages inside the top 10, and thanks to the re unfortunate retirements from Freddy Loix and Kenneth Eriksson in the Skoda. McRae finished the rally in a fine 5th place, just 3 tenths ahead of his brother Colin, having achieved the best result for a Mitsubishi Road Rally car so far in its lifespan. In Corsica, Mitsubishi only ran with Delacour McRae, with Parsonen returning later on during the season. It was another rally when the Mitsubishis were just not fast enough to make the difference. Delacour's best stage results were 2 8 places and in the end he finished the rally in 7th. And because Filip Bogowski's Citroen and Richard Burns Peugeot couldn't score manufacturer's points, Francois managed to finish to take home two important points in the manufacturer's championship. He also profited from the retirements from Tommy Mackinnon and Colin McRae, who injured his hand in the process. Alistair McRae was not able to keep up with his teammate, but he still managed to finish inside the top 10. But it still meant no driver's points for both Mitsubishi drivers. Spain went largely the same from the Mitsubishis, only a bit worse. Delacour was the quicker driver of the two, whilst McRae tried his best to stay competitive, but failed to finish a single stage inside the top 10 while suffering from punctures and slight mistakes. He eventually finished 13th overall. Delacour struggled as well, but on the final day he found just some serious speed and finished 4 out of the 6 stages inside the top 10, with the 6th place being his best result. In the end, he finished 9th overall, but still scored one manufacturer's point as Marcus Grunholm, Philippe Bogalski and Harry Rovampera couldn't score manufacturer's points, so Mitsubishi was once again lucky that the cars ahead of them weren't registered for manufacturer points. Back to gravel, Mitsubishi has hoped to show that the car was at least competitive on rough surfaces, but it wasn't the case. Yanni Parson returned driving a third car for Mitsubishi again, but it didn't bring them any fortunes. All three Mitsubishis would even struggle to finish the stages inside the top 15. The car's problems became more and more visible. Let's check out this footage from Virtual Spectator. Spectator comes from early in stage 7. Solberg Subaru, the two Peugeots of Grunholm and Burns of the Mitsubishi of Alistair McRae, are more or less equal over the bridge, but while the Impreza and the 206s stay fairly close together, the Lancer quickly starts to fall back. As well as being slightly slower out of the corners, keep an eye on the speed readouts at the bottom of your screen. While the first three all hit a high of 144 km an hour or so, the Lancer is 1 or 2 kph slower. Mitsubishi's problems, it seems, aren't confined to tarmac. Parsonen didn't impress as much as he did in Sweden, as he retired at the beginning of day two with an accident. Delacour once again was the quickest Mitsubishi driver, but even he would struggle for pace and earning a 40 second time penalty for arriving late at the time control didn't help. But overall, he did somewhat well, even managing to finish stage 11 in 3rd place. The best stage result for a Mitsubishi in 2002 so far. Overall, he finished the rally 13th, after suffering from a broken wiper which costed him 6 minutes on day 2 alone. Alistair McRae was once again slightly off Delacour, as he didn't finish any stage inside the top 10. On stage 9, he even managed to roll the car, damaging it in the process and losing quite a lot of time. He retired on stage 12 with an engine failure. Another tough gravel event, the Rally Argentina only saw two Mitsubishis as Parsonen would return in Finland. By then, the problems of the rush development of the car were evident, so expectations weren't high. This time, Alistair McRae was the quicker draw of the Mitsubishis, but still missed out on the top 10 stage finish on day 1. Delacour's rally ended early with an accident damaging the car so much that he was forced to retire, his first DNF of the season. From day 2 onwards, McRae's performance was slightly better, as his best stage finishes were two 7th places. At the end, he finished the rally in 10th, but thanks to disqualification, of Marcus Grunholm and Richard Burns, he moved up to 8th place, missing out on the manufacturer's points by one position. Unfortunately for Mitsubishi, the Skodas of Tony Gardemeister and Kenneth Eriksson have finished the rally in 5th and 6th, giving them some much needed manufacturer points. Yet another gravel event for the WRC drivers, and yet another typical car wrecker. 
and just like the previous rallies, not much has changed for the Mitsubishis. Both are still struggling for pace. This time, both Mitsubishis were equally matched on pace, but they were mostly stuck at 11th, 12th or 13th. McRae only finished one stage inside the top 10, but retired on day 3 when he clipped a rock, breaking his steering. Thanks to the retirements of Freddie Loix and Richard Burns, Dedeco finished the rally in 10th place, having only finished two stages inside the top 10. Yet another poor show for the team, and they need to be worried, as the high end dice are getting quicker and quicker. The Safari Rally, probably Mitsubishi's biggest chance to score some points due to the nature of this rally. Unfortunately for Delico, he suffered an engine failure on stage 4, leading to his retirement. Alistair McRae also had quite a lot of problems, including his engine, but thankfully for the team, he managed to keep going and he finished the rally in 9th, scoring yet another lucky manufacturer point, due to the Citroëns and Panizzi not scoring manufacturer points in Kenya. McRae was the last finished manufacturer car in this event as well. By this point, it was clear that Mitsubishi needed a new car to be competitive again, and for Finland, they brought in the improved Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution World Rally Car 2. The car featured a new front bumper, adjustments to the cooling system for better cooling between the brakes and the engine. The engine transmission layout was also changed for a better set of gravity. Also, the car included a new turbo and a new exhaust layout. Some changes in the transmission were made to make life easier for Delacour and McRae, who couldn't adjust to the driving style Mackinnon had, who required an aggressive left foot braking technique. Moreover, the suspension was allowing for more travel and rigidity. Mitsubishi hoped that with this evolution, the team could score some much needed manufacturer's points, because at that stage, they were fifth, behind Skoda by one point, but still ahead of Hyundai, being only one point ahead. For Rally Finland, Janne Parsonen finally returned, also getting the chance of driving the new EVO WRC2. Things wouldn't look better for McCray and Delacour. Francois retired on day one with a suspension problem, being the slowest Mitsubishi driver. McCray managed to finish only one stage inside the top 10, but he also retired from the rally with suspension trouble, also not being on the pace. This leaves Janne Parsonen as the only remaining Mitsubishi. He did show some improvements of the car, finishing multiple stages inside the top 10, including a 4th place on stage 17, and overall he finished already 8th, just missing out on some much needed manufacturer's points for the team. It was time for the first tarmac event for the new car, the Rally Deutschland being held for the very first time in the official WRC calendar. It was not the best rally for Alistair McRae, once again slower than his teammate, he suffered a turbo failure on stage 7, leading to his retirement on day 1. Delico, meanwhile, was on a decent run. After a slow start, he endured a fine day 2, moving up from 14th up to 7th overall, setting the second fastest stage time on stage 13, showing that the new car is having some potential. On day 3, he would finish all stages inside the top 10, only drop back to 9th overall, but still scoring a manufacturer's point, with Loeb, proudly entered Bruno Thierry and Carlos Sainz not scoring manufacturer points. Round 11 of the championship to cruise to San Remo, the last Ashrock rally of the season. San Remo was also the rally where Mitsubishi had introduced their first road rally car last season, and things didn't look much better in 2002. McRae forgot to secure the bonnet after they checked the engine after stage 1, so during stage 2 the bonnet opened and was slightly damaged in the process. This mistake cost McRae quite a lot of time. At the end of day 1, Mitsubishi withdrew McRae as he had a motorbike accident before the event and things didn't heal properly. He was forced to sit out the remainder of the season. Delacour meanwhile had some small problems with his turbo and his brakes during the rally. However, he still finished the rally inside the top 10 and because Marcus Grunholm, Jesus Peras, Cedric Robert and Harry Rufenpera didn't score manufacturer points, Mitsubishi once again earned another point moving back up to 4th in the Manufacturers Championship. With Alistair McRae being ruled out for the rest of the year, Yanni Parson took over his place in the car. Delico was the slower Mitsubishi driver this time. 
he mostly struggled at this event, plus he had to be the road sweeper on day 2, which hindered his progress. Still, a fine consistent drive rewarded him with 9th place at least. Parson, however, could have been the man of the rally. On day 1, he was in a fight for some big points, just like in Sweden. To the delight of the team, Parson would set the fastest stage time stage 5, giving the team their first ever stage win of the new car and their first stage win in over a year. At the end of day 1, he was 5th overall, finishing the first two stages of day 2 inside the top 6. Things were looking good for Parson and Mitsubishi. Unfortunately, all dreams of points were ended when Parson entered a corner too fast and crashed out of the rally, retiring immediately. And as we see later, this could have been a costly mistake. The higher knights of Freddy Loix and Yuha Kankunen finished 5th and 6th, equaling with Mitsubishi, but they were still behind them thanks to McRae's 4th place finish in Sweden in the Ford Manufacturer standings. Yes, I say 4th place because a car ahead of McRae in Sweden wasn't registered for manufacturer's points, so he would score 3 points for the team and 2 for himself. Rally Australia saw the Mitsubishi's dropping back to their usual positions this season. Delacour was once again slower of the Mitsubishi pair, but this would be the least of his worries. On stage 7, he and co-driver Daniel Gratalub suffered one of their biggest crashes in their career, when they clipped a stone near inside and slammed into the trees with high speed. Delacour was luckily not badly injured, but Daniel Gatalub suffered injuries which led to his retirement from co-driving. This left Yanni Parson as the only remaining Mitsubishi driver of this rally. He would not repeat his New Zealand heroics, as he largely finished the stages outside the top 10. After he rolled the car on stage 16, he received a 1 minute time penalty after a long repair time. He would finish the rally in 9th place, missing out on manufacturer points. Things got worryingly close to Mitsubishi, as Gardemeister scored another point for Skoda, dropping Mitsubishi back to 5th in the Manufacturers Championship. This is getting tight. The final rally, as usual, the Rails Rally GB. Mitsubishi brought a third car for this event, with the Brit Justin Dale driving the car. It would be the last rally for François Delico Mitsubishi and his last ever WRC start as a full time driver in the series. But, as usual for the Mitsubishis, they were way off the pace. Dale only survived three stages being way off the pace and retired from the rally after an accident. Both surviving Mitsubishis went through day 1 without problems, but both retired on the same stage on day 2. Parson crashed out in the same place where Grunholm crashed out earlier, resulting in an accident which summed up Mitsubishi's horrible year. Delacour passed the accident scene, but still retired some kilometers later after Delacour clipped a hail bale, resulting in a retirement. In the end, thanks to Marco Martin and Mark Higgins not scoring manufacturer's points, Freddy Loix secured the final manufacturer point for, for Hyundai, moving them up to 4th, and they dropped Mitsubishi back to 6th and last in the Manufacturers Championship. The summary of the season is quite easy, it was terrible. Finishing only once inside the top 6 and scoring the rest of the manufacturer's points by pure luck is a sign that even the car is bad or the drivers were just underperforming. But in fairness to the drivers, Macken and Loix also struggled with the car in 2001. Both did much better in their new teams. It is especially depressing that Loix himself was responsible for Mitsubishi finishing last in the manufacturer's championship. The WRC2 car had shown some small improvements, it even won a stage with Parsonen, but the main issue was the incredible amount of driver mistakes, which costed them a massive amount of points. That, plus the lack of pace on the car itself, were the main reasons they fell down to 6th. Alistair McRae was the only classified driver from the Mitsubishis. He was mostly slower than Delacour, even though there were some rallies where he had the upper hand or at least was close to him, like in Sweden or Argentina. He finished the season in 15th with only 2 points. Frosso Delicor was the most consistent driver of them all, scoring the most amount of manufacturer's points in the tarmac events. His biggest problem was his pace in gravel events. He was unclassified in the standings with a best finish of 7th in Corsica. Yanni Parson was the quickest but most inconsistent driver of them all. He won the only stage in Mitsubishi this season 
and was the quicker drawer in his appearances. But his biggest problem was his lack of experience, which led to multiple crashes. His crash in New Zealand most likely cost the team P4 the Manufacturers Championship. He was unclassified in the standings with a best finish of 8th in Finland. In the next part of the series, we are going to focus on the restructuring progress of Mitsubishi, as they have decided to make the sabbatical year for 2003, to restructure their whole organization and to focus on development for their 2004 car. Until then, see you then.